Ken. Welcome, everybody. Ken. This is Chukat. We're studying Parashat Chukat from Numbers 19. If you need to uh, raise your hand or draw on the screen, this is how you do it. I hope I have some willing readers today. I'm going to jump forward uh, in the reading and jump to the good stuff. Let me see if I can fast forward to the, be oh, I think it's the beginning of chapter 20, I think. It's all good stuff, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and, uh, now, where is... Oh, I've gone too far. Here we go. I think this is the beginning of chapter 20. And about uh, Miriam, when she died, and the water that follows... And the water that follows around, and, and Moses striking the rock, and all that. Uh, okay, so who had... His or her hand up first. Cheryl, are you ready to read? Please go ahead. It's all yours. Okay. Um Vayavou Bene Israel Kol Haeda Midbartsin Bachodesh Harishon Bayashe Bay Bayeshe, Bayeshav, excuse me. Bayeshav, Bayeshav. That's it. Bayeshav Ha'am. Bekadesh. Vetamat Sham. Miriam. Vetikaver Sham. Vetikaver Sham. This little symbol tells you to put the stress here. That means you have a closed, unstressed syllable. How do you pronounce this word? Batamat. Batomat. Batamot. Batamot. So this here at the end is kamatskatan. The reason there's an O vowel in this verb is because the root is mut, and the original vav is preserved only as a short vowel here. Yeah. Mm. Batamot. Batamot, that's right. Vayavou vene Yisrael kol ha'eda midbar tzin b'chodesh harishon vayeshev ha'am b'kadesh v'tamot sham miryam v'tikaver sham Alright, so We've already talked about this one just a little bit. Well, at least you know what the root is. Uh, you can see it's also a vayiktol with a tav at the front that says she is the subject. She who? Mm -hmm. Miriam. Miriam. Of course. Uh, all right. Vayavou is another hollow root. When I say a hollow root, I mean that the second root letter is either a vav or a yod. Yeah. Moot. Does that have a hollow root? Yes, it's a consonant. Yeah. It's got a, it's got a vav in the middle. This also has a hollow root. What is the root of that first word? You can peel away the vayi, that's your vayiktol, and therefore you can peel away the yod as well, yiktol prefix, and the u is yeah. the yiktol suffix. You're left wow. with an, an aleph. We know that it's hollow. Beth. Vav Aleph. Bo. Yeah. Bo. Bo. Exactly. Well, oh. here, here there's no oh. weak Dagesh because of the preceding vowel, but the root is Bet Vav Aleph. Uh, what does it mean? Well, it means come, come. arrive, come. or possibly go. Um, Vayavou means and then they came. Who did? Vene Yisrael, children of Israel. Kol Ha'eda, all the congregation. Midbartzin. Uh, this is being used adverbially, right? Where did they go? Midbartzin. <laughs> when? Bachodesh Harishon. So you can see how these prepositional phrases, well, yes. I guess this one's a prepositional phrase because there's a preposition at the front. But it acts like an adverb. It tells you, it, it answers questions like where, when, how, to what extent. Uh, when did it happen? Bachodesh in the month. Which one? Harishon, the first. Vayeshev, is this a Vayektol? 
Yeah. It's got vav patach dagesh. That's what we're looking for. Oh. If it has vav patach dagesh, you can be sure that it's a vayiktol. Is this a vayiktol? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's also a vayiktol. Yeah. All right. So back to this one. Vayeshev. Now, because it's a vayiktol, it means this yod is not part of the root. So it's another hollow verb. Well, it's a it's got some letter missing. I don't think I would venture to say it's a hollow verb. Okay. And however, there are plenty of examples where we get hollow roots like this. This is not one of them. Okay. Instead, what has happened is the vowel underneath our yiktol prefix letter, it has been modified because of a missing yod. So this one it ha is a root with an initial yod. Yashav. Yashav, which Yashav. we know as sitting or dwelling. Okay, so we've learned about hollow roots okay. where the second root, root letter goes missing. Now, initial yodes will have letters going missing. Um, the name of this verb category is called pe yod. Pe represents the first of the three consonantal root letters. And yod is, well, what shows up first? That's a pay yod. See? So another another name for hollow roots would be ayin, vav, or yod. Ayin, vav, yod. Mm -hmm. Because pay represents the first root letter, ayin represents mm -hmm. the second root letter, and the third root letter is represented by... Uh, lam lamet. 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 Why, why these three letters... Um, it's a number of the um, consonants. It goes back to Arabic. It goes back to Arabic grammar. Pa'al is the verb that means active, activate, verb, do. Yes, active, yeah. So it uses the, the word verb for verbs. Okay. So pe represents the first root letter, ain the second, and lamad the third. Vayeshev ha'am, that is the people, did the action of yashav, stayed, sat, dwelt. The Kadesh. What's the mm -hmm. meaning of Kadesh? Uh, like uh, holy. Holiness. Holy. Wait, I thought that holy was Sarah. Kadosh. Kadosh. Well, yes, but it's the same yes. root. It's the same root, separated? but the pattern's different. Separated What's the difference? Out. Separ it's been separated out. There's, uh, the there's, uh, they're far away from each other. What's the difference between uh, among these three? Kodesh, Kadosh, Kadesh. Uh, they all have the same root. Is, uh, a the, the stative verb. Uh, no, it, Kadesh is a, um, a participle. Both Thomas and Sarah are correct. A stative. It is I a state of being today. verb. <laughs> It is a state of being verb, and mm -hmm. it's also the form of the participle. If it were Katal 3MS, it would look the same, but let's go with participle because that's what Sarah said. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So Kadesh is the state of being set apart. By the way, do you guys remember the story of Judah and Tamar when Tamar dresses up like a harlot? Yeah, unfortunately. And <laughs> Judah says, hey, I'm trying to pay back my debt and get my things back, Is or actually his friend does. Um, where's the Kadesha that hangs out around here? Kadesha. That's your feminine form of this root. Why? Yeah. Why would a harlot... Yeah. Because they're kept, away, they're kept separate from everybody else. Because they are set apart for a particular purpose, oh. unfortunately, oh. in a rated X way. Mm -hmm. wow. But kadosh is an adjective. It describes yeah. something as being set apart. Kodesh mm -hmm. is a noun. noun. It yeah. refers to something like a holy place or holy mm -hmm. s. Mm -hmm. And then kadesh is your state of being either Katal 3MS or participle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can learn a lot from the from the pattern of the word. Vatamot, and then she died. Sham there. Who did? Miriam. There's a lot of uh 
debate about what her name means. So I'm, I actually don't have a good opinion on it. So it's been, what's that? Sorrow, like sorrow, like sadness, bitter. Bitterness. Well, you're right. So a there sad is bitterness. Right. So there is Mar, which has to do with bitter. Uh, Mar is also an Aramaic word, which which means master. Yama oh. is the is the god of the sea. Uh, hmm. or Mar Miria. It's, I mean, it's all over the place. It's probably, my guess is it's probably coming from an Egyptian root and I don't know anything about Egyptian. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm going to seal my lips and move on. <laughs> is this a Vayiktol? Mm. Uh, yes. 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 yes, uh, yes. It is a Vayiktol. So Tav tells me um uh, feminine three as a three f s or mm -hmm. yes yep. or two um m s yeah either you a man or she a woman and yeah. here we're talking She's about Miriam yeah. so context says she and she was buried why isn't it buried why did why didn't she do the action of burying? Well, because she's the she's deceased. Dead. She's dead. <laughs> How do we know? Yeah, she's right. Tired. The dead do nothing. The dead can know nothing, right? Uh, the dead cannot praise you, O Lord. So, how do we know that this is passive instead of active? Besides the fact that the translator says so. Oh, very good. Oh, so here's our yes. Here's our triad of uh, diagnostics, yeah. our triangle of diagnostics, the the, the, mm -hmm. hiric, the kamats, the dagesh. What's the dagesh represent? The doubling of a letter? Well, yeah. What mm -hmm. letter is, what letter has assimilated? The noon. The noon, noon. of Nifal. Noon. Mm. Yeah, exactly. The noon of Nifal. And that Nifal yeah. has a passive voice <laughs> in a lot of verbs. And she was buried. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah, hard yeah. to remember the root kavar. Yeah. Just remember, cover mm -hmm. your dead. Oh, kavar. Yeah. Uh, sham, there. Okay, who is, any comments or questions? All right, who's the next reader? Jesse, would you like to read? Oh, okay. I well, was next, but. Oh, I'm sorry. Eileen, were you next? Yeah. Go ahead. Va lo ve i haya haya main le la ya la la e da Vai go go rala. That's a long no, one. Go go relo. All right, so it's a regular kamats there. Vai ka halu. Ka ka halu. Mm hmm. Vai ka halu. Al mothe. Mm hmm. Baal Aharon. Aharon. Apparently, people get really upset when they get really hungry and really thirsty. Here, they are really thirsty. <laughs> right? Velo haya mayim la aida. Vayi kahalu al Moshe al Aharon. All right? Velo, and there was not, or and not haya there was there was not mayim water la aida two four four remember ed is a witness mm -hmm. ed, remember ed is a witness aida is a group of people who all hold the same testimony um not necessarily all gathered together but just a, people not necessarily gathered together that all belong to a um a single philosophy if i can put it that way um but then over here we get the convening verb va ye kahalu 
Yeah. Based on what we just read, what read, excuse me, based on what we just read, what is a good synonym for a da? Uh -huh. The crowd. Kahal. Kahal. So the kahal is a mm. an amassing or assembling of people, whereas a da is a category of people that all belong together for some reason. Uh, maybe because they all have the same testimony or witness. Mm -hmm. So they're used somewhat interchangeably. And va ye kahalu. Is this a PL? Yes. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And they were gathered, or and they gathered themselves together. Al Moshe, uh, literally on, but figuratively against Moses and against Aharon. The word mayim, is it plural? Can be. Plural? Is no, mayim so. a Hebrew plural word? Uh, it's, it's a collective noun. Singular and plural. Like in the sea or something. Or... Okay, so mayim in the Bible, if I want to say like living yeah. water, it would be mayim chayim. Mm -hmm. The adjective mm -hmm. always agrees with mm -hmm. the, the subject. So yeah. chayim is plural, so mayim is plural, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a possible, I don't even know if I want to get into this, but there are places in the Bible that show up something like... Um, me, what is it? Me, me, which is the construct of the word water. Mm -hmm. Now, now tell me, is this the sing? Excuse me. Is this the the normal construct form of what you would expect from this? No, no. You mm -hmm. would expect the construct form to be may, and that's how it usually shows up in the Bible. But there are a couple places where it shows up like this. So what I want to do is blow your mind just a little bit. Have you ever heard mm -hmm. the word bayit? Yes. Of course, yes. everyone has. Who hasn't? How? Do they <laughs> have the same pattern? Do they have the same yeah. pattern? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If the yod and the mem are a plural or dual suffix, then the answer is clearly no. But if the root letters are mem, yod, mem, mm -hmm. Then it has the same pattern as this, yeah. and its plural construct mm. would look like this. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Yes. Huh? So there's yes. a good chance that Mayim was probably originally a singular word yes. with, with the same pattern as Bayit. It's just mm -hmm. that because its second and third root letters were Yod and Mem, mm -hmm. very early on it was confused for a plural and treated like a plural pretty much throughout the entire Bible. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, plural is the Batim. Batim uh, is the plural for houses or Batim. Right. Well, Bate would be the, the construct. Yeah, yeah. Form, but uh, this right here is probably more original, whereas Bate is going to have a Dagesh ah, the like here, the uh, yeah. for the missing Yod. Mm, okay, thank you. Here, the Yod is preserved. Mm. Uh, Nadeva, what did you say? Oh, I said, why isn't it? I would think I want to say Mayamim. <laughs> uh, the right. The so I can the say Mayame. Has, right. The, the memo goes missing on the construct. If we have okay. uh, Melachim, mm -hmm. then the construct form uh, becomes Malche. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So that's what we're looking at right there, the construct form. Yeah. Nevertheless, because of that, probably faux pas mistake most of the time in the bible this is the construct form yeah. so it's kind of cool to see uh, a possible you know blooper from thousands of years ago um <laughs> nevertheless when we see it in the bible it's treated like a plural so we're going to treat it like a plural too well i suppose um water was written in old um uh, Arabic and so on, like a couple of zigzaggy lines that look like a couple of mems. Very good. The word mem itself mm -hmm. is the construct form of the word mayim. Mem. Just like bayit becomes bet. Ah. So also mayim becomes mem, and that's the name of the letter which looked like curvy water. 
uh, or waves of water. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. This, is, so this is actually another evidence that memyo yeah. is the original root and it's not plural. But in the Bible, it's plural. So, so for us, it's plural. <laughs> mm. And there you go. Hang on, okay. Next reader, was it, uh, who's the next reader? Thomas? Oh, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Vayarev. Ah. Oh. Oh, Vay. Vayarev. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. Vayarev ha'am im Moshe vayomer vayom ru mm. Le mor velu ga. Oh, uh, yes, okay. Ga. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Gava nu bigra bigra hachenu lipen lipen uh, lifne adonai. Very good. The, those are a little challenging for yeah. a couple of reasons, aren't they? First yeah. off, because the Vav is consonantal. Yes. Secondly, because Ayin has a Shva. Usually, we don't see gutturals with Shvas. Uh, Ayin... Oh, oh yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, Ayin, Ayin is a notable exception that can have a silent Shva on it. Not an audible, but a yes, silent Shva. Yes. It can have. Occasionally, we'll see a hey with a silent schwa or a chet with a silent schwa. Mm -hmm. You will not see an ayin, excuse me, an aleph with a silent schwa, mm -hmm. except for like the one or two times it shows up in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. does not show up. Huh. Um, but that's only a silent schwa. If it goes to take a, if it means to take an audible schwa, then it will revert over to one of those reduced vowels. Here it's a mm -hmm. silent schwa. Yeah, and so it's going to be it's going to be pronounced gava nu, where you have that uh, gavanu. end of the syllable gavanu, and which is ridiculous. Nobody knows how to do that anymore, so it simply gets run over and not pronounced, and it just becomes gavanu. And okay, all right. that is a pre uh, suffix with nu, and gava is uh, yeah the root. Bingo. And for yes. Mm -hmm. So does anybody know what the root gava? Well, I guess you do now. Uh, a gavia. What is it? I think it's. I think it's. I, heard, I have that. Gavia. Gavia is a, like a corpse. So I mean, the What's root. It? The root. Uh, like, uh, a dead body. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Gavia. Yeah. Mm. All right. So let's get back to the front. Uh, oh, let me read through one time. Vayarev. Ha'am, im Moshe, vayomru le mor, velu gavanu bigva achenu lifne adunai. Oh, if only we had died like our brothers did. How much easier it would be for us. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know what I'm going to ask here, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is, is it a vayiktol? Yes. <laughs> of course it's a vayiktol. There's your vav, patach, tagesh. There's yeah. your yod. What's yes, your root? Yes, it is. Uh, esh, yod, bet. Excellent. Just like earlier, where the moot mm -hmm. lost its vav and it turned into kamatz katan, mm -hmm. so also here, resh, yod, bet, loses its yod, and it reverts to a short vowel. Should have probably been a chiric, but here it is as a segol, which is, you know, I's, E's, they go back and forth in Hebrew, so we'll have to deal with it. The root is riv, quarreling. Vayarev, wait, so why did it lose its yod? Because it's the... The vowels are um, too close together to it, it, actually pronounce them. It's actually backwards. It's because of a reason that hasn't been stated yet that this vowels too close together thing happens. It's yeah. a vayiktol. Vayiktols will lose their mater lectionis. They will become shorter. They will get penultimate stress. They will apocopate. 
And that's what's happened here. Instead of vaya, instead of yariv, let's take off the vayiktol for just a second. What would it become? It would become yariv. He will quarrel. As soon as you add the vayiktol, you lose the mater lectionis, and that's where your short vowel comes from. Vayariv, vayamot, vayakom, vay. Trying to think of some other ones. Um, Vayashir and he shot and he sang. Uh, so that segol tells tells us that we have a missing yod. The kamatskatan tells us we have a missing vav, but they are both hollow, and those hollow root letters vav and yod go missing. And he quarreled. Who did? Ha'am. Wait, I thought people was plural. Mm -hmm. It's a collective name. Like Very good. It's a collective noun. Exactly. So he, that is the people, quarreled, aim Moshe with Moses, Vayomru, and they said, Lemor saying, Well, that's redundant to have two roots amar next to each other. Just remember, Lemor usually acts like a, a quotation mark. Here comes the direct quote. Bam. Velugavanu bigva achenu lifne adunai. Lu. This is a really good translation. Would that something had happened? We <laughs> wish something would have happened. If only something had happened. Inshallah, uh, like thing. Say again. Inshallah, it's the same. It's the same kind of root. Ish, I don't understand. In, well, in, in Arabic, inshallah means inshallah. If only. Mm -hmm. Very good. It's and, I to go, uh, my eye to God. Ah, I understand. Okay. And I the see. same thing happens in Spanish. Ojalá. Mm -hmm. The same roots. Ojalá in Spanish. Uh, ilu is another possibility. Uh, in Hebrew. Yes. Also, <laughs> lule. Lule. Mm -hmm. All three of these basically mean the same thing. Mm hmm if only we knew Katal suffix had died, bigva, in the dying, I guess, of Achenu, our brothers, Lifne Adonai. And let's see. Annie, is it your turn to read? Um, okay. And then, Jesse, you've got the next one. Okay. Ve, ve lama havetem et kahal adonai el hamidbar haze Lamut sham anachnu uv irenu. And lama looks like two or four added to the word ma. For what? Kind of like, ah. what, kind of like what happens in Spanish. Por qué? For mm -hmm. what? That's our why question. Have a tem has a he feel hey at the front and a tem katal suffix. What's the root? Oh. Oh. Wait, then why is there a tere? Well, that's an IE the, vowel. Because of the um, schwa before. Mm, no, not quite. Okay. There should be there should be an O the missing vowel. vowel. Uh, yeah, right. okay. there should yes, be an O yeah. vowel for the missing vav, but instead there's an IE vowel. Oh, Wait, okay. is there supposed to be an IE vowel in he feel? Yeah. He feel mm -hmm. and that he feel the, I it's e a vowel. question or is it not question form? No, I'm afraid it's not. This is a he okay. feel. Okay. And right. we, Good. <laughs> we can we can know that it's not an interrogative hey because it's already got a question word at the front. All right. Okay. Um, also, let's see, have them with its stress over here will cause that what should have been a kamatz in an open syllable to drop to a reduced vowel. So it does look like an interrogative particle. I totally agree. Nevertheless, it's a hey, he feel. And so the tere mm -hmm. is the IE vowel of he feel. And that mm -hmm. 
um, overpowers the missing vav. Havetem cause to bring or cause to come. Why did you all cause to come et kahal Adonai, the congregation of the Lord? The Lord is definite, so kahal is definite. The congregation. El Hamid Bar Hazeh to this wilderness, to the wilderness, the this one, Lamut Sham to die there. Anachnu Uv Irenu. Does anybody know this route? Ba'ar is cattle. See, this actually strikes me as odd because I know the root bet einrish as burning or kindling. Ah, starting a fire. Right. Like be mm -hmm. means he kindled something. Okay. So I'm wondering what is ba'ir or ba'irim? How does that relate to cattle or livestock? Because we send it up on Sacrifice. the fire on the altar? Yeah, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If somebody uh, wants to figure it out or comes, comes up with a suggestion, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just kind of tuck it in our minds as a synonym for behema or, uh, you know, mm -hmm. some other some other word for livestock. Fire offering. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesse, go ahead. Okay. Um, Verama elin tunu mimitsraim lechavi otanu el hamakom hara haze lo makom zera ut ena ve gafen the Rimon Umaim Ayin Lish Tot. Very good. Vilama. Usually this is Lama. Yes. But oh, here the, the accent is why? over here. Great question. I wish I knew. Vilama. Now, here's the thing in the Bible, you will see. Accents shift back and forth for various reasons. If it's pause, a little shift. If it's close to another stressed accent, it'll shift. Why they're doing it here, I'm afraid I don't have a good answer. Um, in modern Hebrew, it's always lama, but in the Bible, it will show up as lama. And for what he'elituno, what's the root? Uh, Allah. From to uh, come up, come down. Right. Uh, yes, is this the yod of the root? Ah, it's feminine. Yes. What? And uh, is this uh, cool? If okay, so this is actually a very difficult word. Um, yeah. Let's break it down. According to the translation, you all, well, you, probably Moses and Aaron, made us come up. So we can strike away the new at the end. Yeah. As, as we the, as the us. Yeah. Uh the hey and the Chirik Yod or he feel. Yeah. Which is the causing or making someone do something. Because and... of the hey at the front. We know that it should be a katal suffix. So we're looking for a katal suffix. So, so what katal suffix is two? Feminine, three, uh, 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 no, three, two. There isn't one. Oh, There's yes. One. Two. A third, uh, three, uh, plural, uh, um, three MP or FP. Mm -hmm. That would be tem or ten. Ten, ten, a uh, two, two MP. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at with this ooh right here might actually represent a a more original vowel. If you look at Akkadian, they have an ooh in the masculine form, like tumu or something like that. 
Mm-hmm. So are we looking at a more original Katal suffix? Eh, maybe. <laughs> we know from the context, you all are the ones that made us come up from Mitzrayim. You and Mos- uh, Moses and Aaron. Yeah, yeah. So that's why the translator knows from the context what it should be, huh? but that doesn't look like uh, yeah. Helitem. And even even if it were Helitem, uh, the Mem and the Nun might assimilate into each other, but there's no Dagesh. So there's a lot of yeah. guesswork here, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, it would almost be. Um, it would almost be tempting to say that's our first root letter, that's our second root letter, that's our third root letter, and that ooh is our suffix. I'm sorry, that doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure that there is an ein lamed tav. If there is, it doesn't mean to come up. And the ooh suffix on a katal would be they. So why yeah. did they yeah. bring us up? Yeah. Whereas, the previous, whereas in the previous one it was uh wasn't it you all hang on yeah yeah here it is right there so it wouldn't make sense to say you all and then in the next verse talk about they so that's a real gem right there mm-hmm. probably from an original tumu or something like that mm-hmm. out of egypt lehavi there's that hollow root again, cause mm-hmm. to come to bring Otanu us mm-hmm. El Makom Hara Haze <laughs> <laughs> to okay. the place, this evil one, this one. Uh, makom zer. Wait a second. Why is this Makom and this one is Makom? Um, uh, construct, construct. We come over here. Yeah, it's all spring. Yeah. This one is in construct with the following word. So we're yeah. going to find those long unaccented kamats or tsere vowels and drop them down to shva. Yeah. Lom kom zera. It's not a place of zera, seed, planting. <laughs> uh, it's not a place to grow a garden. Or here they say mm-hmm. offspring. Eh, I don't know if I agree with that. Seeds. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a fertile ground. Uh, the mm-hmm. reason I wouldn't use offspring is because of the following things. These exactly. have to do with fruit and trees and vines. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the context yeah, yeah. seems to talk about something grown from the ground. Ut ena, the gefen, the rimon. You see how they translated these? Aya uh, or. Uh, mm-hmm. Av in Hebrew is much more versatile. Yeah. Then and is in English. Mm, Av true. is simply a, con- a conjunction, and it yeah. can be translated in a variety of different ways, whether it's a transition yeah. word, like so then, or a conjunction, and, or possibly even but. So check out the context, make sure what you, uh, make yeah, sure it yeah. makes sense and translate it that way. It's okay. You don't have to translate Vav as and all the time. It's much more versatile than mm-hmm. that. Omayim Ayin. What word do we know that looks like this? And. and is, there is no. That's the, and. That's the and. Uh, I'll use air quotes, construct form of, of Ayin. So this is and. the oh. long form, and that's the mm-hmm. short form. Oh. Yeah. There is not what? It's almost like it's in construct, even though it's not a noun. Well, actually, ayin would originally be a noun, but then it's used in a different way. That's how most of Hebrew adverbs came about. Did you know that? Um, Most of our Hebrew adverbs start as nouns, and then their function changes over time, and now we call them adverbs or conjunctions or something like that. Uh, Think of the word asher. Does anyone know the noun from which a share comes? A share uh, is a relative particle. This is a very good at- word. In Aramaic, it's preserved as atar, and it's a place. And in modern Hebrew, it's an internet site. Mm. So it seems like if you want to say something more about the thing you just said, mm-hmm. they would use this word atar or atar or ashar or whatever. And 
use it as a placeholder, be like, okay, now I'm telling you more information. Here it comes. And over yeah. time, it turns into the relative particle. That was originally yeah. a noun right there. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of examples that happen like that. Um, uh, ayin, mayim ayin, there is no water, lishtot, to drink. Mm -hmm. Who gets the next reading? Could I have a shot? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Ve bo boshe ve aron mif mip ne ha ka kahar kahal kahal el pet peta um peta um Ahal, ahel, ohel, ohel, yes, a tent, ohel, moed, vai, vai, yep, vai, yep, lo, al, pene, ahem, al, pene, ahem, um, Vai yara ke vod adonai el al al le chem. Excellent. Vayavo Moshe the Aharon Mipne Hakahal El Petach o Hel Moed. Vayiplu al penehem Vayera chvod adonai alehem. In... There's that word we were talking about earlier, the assembly. Patach is opening something. So a petach is an opening, a door. Opening entrance, yeah. An old hell is a tent. Flat. Mo the flat of the tent. <laughs> what is the root of moed? Moed. Uh, yeah, meeting is correct. Yeah. To get, uh, come together. Vaad. Vaad is the root. And All most right. of our most of our verbs that have a vav in the first root position mm -hmm. turn into yods. So if you want to look it up, you'll have to look it up as yaad. Mm -hmm. Okay. The same the same thing happens with a lot of other words like yeled and yashav. Yeah. They all but, started uh, out as vashav right. or valad. Or or it's actually walad, yeah. which yeah, turns walad. into valad. Walad. Yeah. And how do we know this? Well, from other forms of mm -hmm. this root in the Bible. Like for example, a moshav is a mm -hmm. seat. Where'd the Vav come from? It's original. Mm -hmm. Or if somebody was born, they are Nolad. Nolad. There's the original Vav. It's only when that Vav comes at the beginning of the mm -hmm. word that it seems to revert or change over to a Yod. Mm -hmm. um, I've mentioned it before. There is one place in the Bible where Sarah is without child, and mm -hmm. it says that she was without Walad. Mm -hmm. mm. Cool. That preserves the original vav. Mm -hmm. Vayipalu. We've got vayiktol, yod prefix, u vayiktol suffix. What's the root? Um, nafal. 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 Very good. So it's a very, nafal is a quite a common vocabulary word. So this should be something mm. that I should pick out but for those of us who didn't see that root yeah the noon the missing noon is right here is a dagesh when you see that dagesh you should think up oh, a letter's missing usually a noon but sometimes something else and it's a yiktor it's a vayiktor vayiktor yes vayiktor mm -hmm. sorry so, and they nafal they fell now nafal mm -hmm. is an easy one to remember because the word fall is in the word nafal <laughs> yeah, yeah, very easy. Al <laughs> panehem. Uh, what's the root of panehem? Um, panim hem. 
Penem. And yeah. Penun Yod. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't always get to see the Yod at the end. Um, actually, I would argue that that's probably a plural Yod instead of an original Japanese root uh, Yod, yeah. but uh, Vayera. Uh oh. This looks tricky. Is this a Vayiktol? Yes. Yes. Yes, it so is. That means the Los de Mata Lecciones, yes? Oh, you're so smart. You're so smart. Oh, yeah. So what's the root? Yeah. Ra'a, yeah. Ra'a. Ra'a. Resh, Aleph, Hey. So here's another example of where there should have been a Mater yeah. Lecciones, but Vayiktols go, mm-mm, not going to have it. I'm going to apocopate. So we One. don't get that hey. That's really annoying. Mm-hmm. Vayera, what binyan is it? Uh, um, that's the form. It is a vayiktol, but that's the form. Oh. What's the binyan? Kal. Mm. No? It's a tricky one, isn't it? It is Vahie. not kal. What? What? Is it nifo? Uh-huh. All right, so the vayar <laughs> is the way that it shows up in the kal binyan. It's very, very... Uh, oops, I put a kamatz instead of a... I think it goes up like this. There it is. Vayar is how it shows up in the kal. We still have that missing A at the end. Yes. But this right here reflects the original like form of yiktol, which was mm-hmm. yaktul. There's your mm-hmm. ah right there. Ah. It was yaktul mm-hmm. that turns into yiktol. How frustrating, isn't it? Yeah. But this is a tzere. Mm-hmm. Jesse, what binyan is it? Um, I was going to say hifel. Jesse, I thought you said it. Uh, did I? Some nifel? Of I said Someone, oh, I'm sorry. Christine said, said it. Christine. Well. I don't think I said it. Nifal is the answer. Nifal. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. In Nifal, <laughs> we're supposed to get a Chirik, a Kamatz, and a Strong Dagesh. And here, instead of a Chirik, Kamatz, Strong de- Oh. Oh. Can't put a Strong Dagesh in the Resh. So it compensates by lengthening the preceding vowel. Wow. It is a nifal. Uh, uh, the length thing was zera, yeah. Oh. Because mm-hmm. of the length thing with zera, because we can't put yeah. that in the resh. Mm-hmm. Vayera <laughs> means, and someone was seen. That is, they appeared. Mm-hmm. But, kvod Adonai is what appeared. What's the root, kavid? Uh, heavy glory. Mm-hmm. No. Kaved is a part, state of being verb that means here it was heavy. Mm-hmm. Kavod is the I guess the, I, I guess the it's weight a noun. of the presence. Yeah, the weight of the presence. That's a great way to describe it. The weight of that person's presence is the glory. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Now we also get to see this root in the PL which is causing something to be heavy or glorified. And that's where we get key bed to honor someone mm-hmm. or something. Honor your parents. Mm-hmm. Use this. Or it would, it would actually be the imperative kabed, but whatever. It's still nifal. Uh, <laughs> PL. Vayera kvod Adonai, the, the glory of the Lord appeared. Alehem. What's the root of El? Um, um, you don't really think about two? that. Uh, yeah, I, I, for the word see. two that we know as Aleph Lamed, there are only two root letters there visible. And T. Yod is the or original two. root letter. There are places in the Bible where it still shows up as Ale or Ele. Uh, same thing with Al will occasionally show up as Ale. It used to have a Yod. But Yod. Ah. Yod as the third root letter disappears a lot. Look, it disappeared mm-hmm. here. Yeah. It disappears on Al and El. Only rarely do we... Oh, look, here. Where's the mm-hmm. Yod there? It went missing. Uh, even Pene has a third root letter, Yod, that goes missing. Here, it's a construct Yod, not a root mm-hmm. Yod. So mm-hmm. 
there's another category of words or verbs or roots where the letter goes predictably goes missing yeah comments or questions so it apocopates it's not no no apocopating is a different term it's a, a apocopating is a technical term for trying it it's where a mater lectionis letter goes missing among other oh. things Whereas weak roots are defined as having one or more letters that at least occasionally go mm -hmm. missing. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's the same thing in, uh, like in English when we say illogical. There's used, there, <laughs> there used to be an N right there because N in Latin means not. Right. In logic, where did yeah. the N go? Well, it's a weak letter. Yeah. It assimilated into something else, or sometimes W's and Y's just drop out of Latin mm -hmm. roots. Mm -hmm. Right. You're you're noticing a pattern here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yod Vav. So it appears that the pronunciation of these three letters in particular are problematic across the globe, not just yes. in Hebrew. And um, you think about like this word right here. Do we say two? No, it's two. Where'd the W go? Not pronounced. Yeah. It's like it fell yeah. out. Uh, it's kind of like about... a silent W. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. How about two. sky turning into a vowel? Skies. Yeah. Yod mm -hmm. is a weak letter. So is, uh, excuse me, Y is a weak letter, and so is Yod in Hebrew. So you'll see plenty of uh, examples where Vav, Yod, and Nun will go missing. Those are weak roots. All right, here we have a little itty bitty verse that I would hate to give to anyone to read, so I'll read it instead. Vaidaber Adonai El Moshe Lemor shows up scores of times in the Bible. The <laughs> Lord spoke to Moses saying, Wow, that's a long verse. Who wants this monster? I can. All right. Oh, Jesse wants it too. Uh, Jesse. You have to flip <laughs> you a coin have Jesse. Jesse. Okay, go ahead, you Thomas, can. and then Jesse, I'll no, give Jesse, you the next Jesse's two. Okay, that's not a problem. No, no, I'm giving her the next two. Go ahead, Thomas. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay. Kach et hamate vehak hel. Oh, vehak hel. Et ha eda ata veaharon veaharon ahiha. Ne achicha ve di bar tem el ha el hazela le einehem venatan mi mav ve hotseta lehem majim min hazela ve hish hita et there's that word again for the beasts or the the ah, things okay. that go the things that get kindled i guess oy, oy, oy. Okay. uh hey remember to make the s set sound okay. oh, yeah. yeah. yes. mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> Vehakel et haeda Atav aharon achicha Vidibartem el hasela Le enehem Venatan me mav Vahotseta Lahem mayim Min hasela Vehishkita et haeda ve et beiram. Now, as I'm reading through here, I'm always looking for something to kind of discuss on each of these slides. I've just underlined everything that I'd love to discuss with you all. Does anything here stand out for you all that I've underlined? The comma. The uh, comma. stop in the in the reading and uh, stop in the it's sentence meaning which word Vekitol, Vekitol with accent on the last syllable yes 
there's an example of it here and mm. here. We, we, one of the ways that we can tell that a word is vekatal is if it is 1CS or 2MS with final stress instead of penultimate. If the stress moves to the end, we know it's vekatal. Vehotseta. What would it what would it normally be without a vav? Hotseta. The accent should be there. What would this be without a vav? Hishkita. Right here. So yeah, it did shift. So we know it's a vekatal. So we're going to translate it as an incompleted or future tense. All right. So that takes care of two of the things. And we were just talking about roots that have an initial yod or original vav. There you go. What's the root here? Um, yatsa. Yod. Yatsi. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say yatsi because it sounded so similar. But <laughs> yatsa, yatsa yeah. to go out is here in what, Binyan? Hifil? Hoful. He, oh. No, it's actually hifil. And the reason that the vav shows up isn't because it's a hufal, otherwise right. it would be an u. Yes, exactly. If it okay. were a hufal, it would have an u vowel there. But he but feel, feel, you remember how I told you how yiktol was originally mm -hmm. yaktul? Yeah. Like that? Well, it turns out he feel was originally haf el. With All the right. patach mm -hmm. under here, the patach of the yiktol, with a patach here, and a vav here, it makes an ow sound, which naturally turns into oh. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at that ow tse ta turning into mm. ow tse ta. That's where the o comes from. It took a diphthong and simplified it down. Good. So there's an example. Oh, uh, how about up here? What binyan is vihakel? <laughs> There's your hay with patach. Oh, uh, is it a he feel? Absolutely. And because of the patach, we know it's not katal, but it's derived from some yiktol form. Vekatal? It can't be vekatal. It has to have because of the patach, it has to be it has to come from a yiktol form. It's an imperative. Vekatal? No, no. Imperative. Mm -hmm. It's an imperative. So Question, if this is a he feel, where is the yod? Yeah. Shouldn't it have a yod right there? Apocopated. So imperatives mm -hmm. are another form that likes to apocopate. So far, we're up to mm -hmm. vayiktol. We're up to imperatives. The infinitives will even apocopate. The all of the volative forms, actually, jussives, they all like to apocopate. It, it's Really annoying, but at least you have a, a, a tsere there to remind you of the missing yod. Because I and E vowels are basically close cousins, just like O and U vowels are. And sometimes A and O vowels. Never mind, I'm getting carried away. <laughs> this is the other thing I wanted to bring up. Remember I told you about mayim at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Look at this word, yep. memav. Memav. The vav here means his. The yod means um, it's plural. Plural. Very good. So the root is his water. Amen. Yod mem. His waters. Mem yod mem is the root, mm. which means that the singular form mayim was originally singular. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Hmm. Uh, what was the other thing? Was that everything? I just got that. Jared, don't don't, yes, don't move from the side yet. This is like one of those summary summary okay. verses, and it it um you notice that Moses. I'm going to give you the meta text within the context here from my perspective because I have to leave. But you were asking about their beasts. The beasts are the dull-hearted, um, the people that are complaining. They have no faith. You've got every component of messiah in here the staff from exodus 3 1 what's in your right hand the staff you've got the mayim his water is the water moses isn't mentioned here but aaron the, the theophoric meaning of aaron is light bringer so you have the light bringer bringing his water with the staff uh which is also referred to as the rock the cornerstone even um to the 
dull hearted, which is also from the root of ba'ar, which, as you said, is to consume or kindle, um, to eat. And what are they going to eat? The bread of his body, eat and drink of the cup of his blood. Mm -hmm. from the it's filled. This this is packed. And Moses isn't even mm -hmm. mentioned in this. So this is the second silver trumpet of Numbers 10. Second silver trumpet of Numbers 10? Yeah, I'll, I'll go into that. I'll, I'll tell you about that next week. I got to go because I got another All class. Right. All okay, right. Thanks. Thanks for joining. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, this uh, the, uh, the word rock, Zela. When I how, read, how do you read uh, it? Uh, Zela. How do you read Zela. it? Ah, uh, Zela. 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 That, that German accent isn't doing you any favors. <laughs> okay. okay, what about Zela. the Hasela? Okay. Uh, when I read uh, the Psalms in uh, in uh, many times, I read uh, when um, when area of a Psalm ended, Zela. Zela. Is that okay. the same? No, it's a different word. It ends in, in okay, it ends okay. with a kamatze. Uh, okay. And ah, everybody's okay. arguing about how you know what it should okay. mean, whether it's a <laughs> musical term or a transition term, yeah. something mm -hmm. like that, a pause okay. of some kind. Ah, okay, yes. And uh, the next uh, reason, uh, uh, there is a word mayim with two accent marks. When I read that, the first one, what is here pronounced? Ma sure. Mayim. Right, so we... Right. We know from vocabulary that the, that the stress should be on the first syllable. But as okay. far as the accent marks go, when you see an accent mark at the end of a word, yeah, an accent, an accent mark is supposed to go on the letter that starts the syllable. Mm -hmm. so this, for example, is on the beginning of the syllable. So is this ah. one. So is this one. But when, you see, but when you see one that's at the end of the word like that, that's not marking mm -hmm. the accent. That is one of those um, cancellation marks that always shows up either at the end or beginning of the word. Uh, there's a, there's a, there it is again. Okay. Uh, I don't see one that starts at the beginning, but they do exist. Fortunately, most of the cancellation marks will mark the stress. Just not okay, all. Okay. I understand for reading. What wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Jesse, you get two verses. Go ahead. Vayikach Moshe et ha-mate. Milifme Adonai Kaasher Tsivahu. Mm-hmm. How do you parse that out? Tsivahu? Oh, let me read through one, one time, sorry. Vaikach Moshe et Hamate Milifne Adonai Kaasher Tsivahu. How do you parse out Tsivahu? Tsivahu? The root, the root is tzadi vav yod. We know this root from words like mitzvah, mitzvot. Command. Command, exactly. There is a missing yod of the root. Why is there a hey? Is that the tziva of the word tziva? It's katal, tzava. Oh, ne, ne, tziva is katal, yes? Tziva is katal. Right, tziva is the pl katal form. But this, hey, is that a root letter? No. Mm. It's a vowel. So it's a root letter, yes. So no. You see? no, no. This right here, that's a mater lectionis. That's not. It can't be a root letter because it's a vowel. Ah, okay, okay. Oh, double oh. vowel. Uh, uh, yes, double. Uh, so, and, uh, well, okay, the vav, the vav is doubled because it's a pl. Ah. Pl gets a doubling. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, okay. The, root, the root is tzadi vav with a missing yod. Mm. So what hey is this? That's not a mater lectionis because uh, it's got a vowel uh, attached to it. He. Very good. He. So this is the original form of the suffix o that was originally who or ehu or ahu. Mm. And it remains intact on this Lamad Yod verb. Yay. That's pretty cool. There are other places where the verb would maintain the Yod as well. And you would get something like this. 
Mm. The Yahoo or something. Let's see, hang on a second. Let's see, uh, let's see, who was probably or something like that. This is an extremely mm. rare form where this is preserved and that's preserved, but it does exist. Yeah. And those are the rare gems that help us under just understand what happened for these forms. Mm -hmm. Letter went missing. A yod went missing. And that is a reason why is uh, Lamed uh, Yod verbs. Uh, the name is Lamed Yod, not not Lamed He, because uh, Kamat He is not a vowel. Correct. Uh, not a consonant. Sorry. Not a consonant. It's a Good. Does they, anyone know yeah, any? Yeah, that is the reason. Lamed Yod. Does anyone yes. know any actual Lamed He verbs? Mit uh, Makif. Oh. Mapik. Yeah. Like, uh, ma 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 uh -huh. like Gavach. Yeah. Or, um, what is it? Uh, Kaha. Uh -huh. oh. Kaha <laughs> is uh, Kahe. Um, I can't remember if it's light or dark. It's dark, isn't it? Dark. It's dark. dark. Okay, thank you. Kahe is dark. Gavah or gavah is to be tall. Uh, there's also another one, taha, but I can't remember what its meaning was. And there, there are a few of them that have an actual lamed consonantal hey, but to call the lamed yod verbs a lamed hey vowel is a oh. misnomer. It is not an accurate statement, but we have the BDB, which does so. So the error lingers on and will continue to linger on for likely hundreds of years. All right, Jesse, this one's yours also. Vayak Hilu Moshe Baaharon et Hakahal et Pne Hasala Vayomer. Rahem Shim U Na Hamorim Hamin Hasela Hase Notsi Lachem Mayim. So this is where it's starting to spice up a little bit. Moses and Aaron are pissed. Vayakhi Lu Moshev Aharon et Hakahal. El pene hasala vayomer lahem shimuna hamorim hamin hasela haze no tsi lahem mayim. I don't know if you can hear it yet, but it's getting spicy. And where, okay, where did the yod of this he feel verb go? To the lamet. It's the same thing we've been talking about. It's got a, mm -hmm. it's a vayiktol, so it's going to apocopate that yod out. Mm -hmm. So the yod is gone. It's left with a chirik. And Ooh, what's the difference between sala and sela? Um, a passive Asal? form is a, a, a upper word. Yeah. Sala Ooh. shows up at the end of a logical statement, a logical unit. So it's at the end of the sentence, if you will, whereas Sela does not. See, there's the end over there. Mm -hmm. What is Notsi? Yatsa. The root is Yatsa, originally Watsa. Why is there a Hirik Yod and a Holam Vav? Uh, this, uh, this, uh... Yiktol, yeah, but it's very. It is a yiktol with a noon yiktol prefix letter. We will. We will, yeah. Oh. <laughs> with that holam, remember the owl, owl sound turning into o. Mm -hmm. That's what happened here. Instead of now tzi, yeah. it becomes not tzi. Mm -hmm. Let's see. We will cause he feel to go out for you all. Water will bring some water out for you. <laughs> um, 
Moshe, question. Is it you or God doing this? Remember, mm -hmm. this is what Moshe gets reprimanded for and says, you're not going into the land because you dishonored me in front of all the people. Mm -hmm. Yowch. Okay, comments or questions here? Um, Oops, I lost that's it. Fine. That's fine. That's fine. I lost it. Where did it go? There it is. Mm -hmm. Do you have a comment? Or yes, question? I, I, I'm just, um, I was. I, I love the words that they've used for rebels. Yeah. Hamorim. What's the root? Mar. Mar. Hey. Marav. Marav. Double R. Resh. I wonder if it's actually. Oh, I think it's Mem Resh Yod. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a yeah, Sure. Sure. Yeah. So if we look at another example like bana or bet nun yod to build, it would be bonim, same pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Ha bonim would be the builders. Ha morim would be the ones rebelling. Uh -huh. Okay, who's up for reading next? Can I read that one? Sarah, go ahead. Okay. Um, vaya vaya rem Moshe et yad yado um vaya ya vay yech vayach vayach et ha sela be ma te Matthew mm -hmm. Pe pa um pa amim pa amayim pa amayim sorry mm -hmm. pa amayim um too many hours in that one yeah. um va yes yets yetsu va yetsu mayim rav ravaim ravim sorry um va Tish 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 Yes. Yes. That was a tough yes. one to read. Good job. Vayarem Moshe et Yado Vayach et Hasela Bamatehu Baamayim Vayetsu Mayim Rabim Vatesht Haeda Uv Iram. All right, so we have some. We have some good ones here we can talk about. All right, so we've kind of talked about this one already with Vayarev quarreling. Well, here now it's Vayarem. What's the root? I would argue that it's a yod because of the segel. Resh yod. Resh yod is... Um, Resh Yud Mem doesn't exist, right? It should be Resh Vav Mem. What's Resh That's Vav? Right. Mem? I said, yeah. Room. Well, then, wait, if it's Room, then shouldn't we get a Kamatz Katan here? Why is it now a Segol representing a missing Yod? Okay. Mm. Feel. Mm -hmm. So we're taking uh, Room, which is to be high or exalted, and mm -hmm. we're putting into the He Feel, and we get Harim. To cause something to be high or lifted up. Or excuse me, for cause something to be high up. So it means he lifted it. He feel. Of Resh Vav Mem. Rum. He caused to be high up. He lifted up. Moshe did. Et Yado. His hand. Vayach. Oh, this is just a real peach, isn't it? The Vav is a Vayiktol, the Yod is a Yiktol, the Kaf is the only root letter you can see. 
It has two <laughs> weak letters. Nevertheless, it's a very common verb that we would all do well to know. It's from the root nun, kaf, yod. We know that nun as the first root letter is problematic. And we know that yod as the third root letter is problematic. Mm. This one happens to be doubly irregular, doubly weak. Right. Uh, yes. So what would be, what would be the, what would be the um, Katal version of that? Very good. The only binyan, I think the only binyan that it shows up in is he feel. So right, it's okay. Katal 3MS form will be this right here. Mm. Wow. Katal 3MS <laughs> he feel is he ka. We have the dagesh of the missing noon mm -hmm. and we have the kamate of the missing yod in this form anyway. And if we wanted to move it over into some other forms besides 3MS, we get to see the yod. How would you say you struck? You struck Alex. Hikita. Mm -hmm. Hikita. So here we get to see the yod of the root, even though in 3MS we don't. But will you ever see that noon? Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, if there's a place, I'd, it's not coming to mind. You don't get to see that noon very often. What did he strike? Et hasela. Bamatehu. Ooh, there's that who. Talking about the original who, uh, the mem tells us that we're talking about an object, something tangible, something concrete. Oh, so we have another gem with one root letter. Oh, god, yeah. <laughs> At least you have a dagesh in it. What do you think the first root it letter is? It could have two te uh, texts. It. it okay, so technically it does have two texts, it's just that yes. one of them is an assimilated noon, right. Okay. Yes. So the root letter is nun tet yod. 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 Yeah. Just like we saw earlier with tsivahu in a lamad yod verb. Mm -hmm. So also we have bamatehu with a lamad yod noun. Look, mm -hmm. nouns can be and are irregular just like verbs are. Mm -hmm. This one is a lamad yod noun. The lamad yod is gone. The yod is missing. The root is nun tet yod, which means either to incline or yeah. recline or lean. So what is an object used for leaning? A mate. 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 Yes. A stick. Very good. A stick. Yeah, exactly. A stick. You know what you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A stick. A stick. <laughs> uh, how many my Unless you've got a dog to bring it back. <laughs> Pa'am oh. is uh, stepping or marching or paces or something like that. And it turns oh, yes. into two um. times. So pa'amayim has a dual suffix. Mm -hmm. Step or once or time doubled twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he struck the rock twice with his staff. Vayetzu. Came Here out. Exactly. Here's the yod of yiktol, but there's the missing yod of the root. Mayim Rabim. Here it's plural, so we're to assume this is plural. Much waters or abundant waters. They translate it here with an adverb. Mm -hmm. Don't really agree with that, but hey, it works. That's how that's how we would say it in English. So let's run with it. Vatesht. <laughs> What's the root? Is it a vayiktol? Yes. Yes. Is the top yeah. a yiktol letter? No, no, uh, it's mm -hmm. a vayiktol. It has to have a yiktol yeah. letter. Yeah. So that means we have two root letters visible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can see from the translation that the that this is the uh, verb shata, uh, yes. which technically has the root shin tav yod. Oh, the yod goes missing, and look, it's a vayiktol. So even the mater lectionis letter goes missing. Mm -hmm. <sighs> By the way, when you see a word like this that has two mm -hmm. schwas at the end, what does Hebrew normally do when it has two audible schwas one after the other? But to shit, uh, oh, it, oh, it becomes a, 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 a what's it called? Banana. The second one. 
audible. Getting some conflicting information. If if there if you have two audible schwas in one a row, one of them becomes an Hebrew air sound. One. Let's 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 start with broad brush strokes. The first one becomes a full vowel hmm. of some kind, right? Like yeah. for example, when we see um, um, that. Remember when vav becomes u in front of a word that starts with shva uh -huh. right so let's try i'll just use katal tem but you know whatever you want this starts with a shva can we put another shva here at the front no so what does hebrew do it turns the first one into a vowel a full vowel for this it turns into u yeah. now let's look at another one Mlachim starts with a shva what if we want to be like kings? Two schwas, can't do it. Turns the first one into a full vowel. What? Here it's just a, here it's going to be a schwa. Uh, 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 here, here it. Yeah. That's what it should turn into. Kimlachim. Kimlachim, right? You'll see the same thing in front of like. Uh, I, I gave this example recently on the chat. Um, right? Yerushalayim. If you put b in front of it, what happens? Yeah. It actually turns into b because instead of having a chirik yod and a shva, just, a silent shva, it just turns into chirik yod. B rushalayim. B rushalayim. Uh, another example would be, um, ooh, what if it's a, ooh, this is going to be a tough one. No, don't do that one. Don't do that one. <laughs> no, let's do it. Why not? Uh, mm -hmm. What if you want to say like tense? Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. It would be like... Uh. Alright, so we have two reduced vowels. This yes. one is going to have to take an O vowel. Um, uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, okay. Think about this. Yeah. Oholim. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 no, it becomes ohalim. Oh, uh, oh, okay. oh, that one's that one. That one's probably not a good example. Let me do. <laughs> let me do. Uh, uh, kodashim. There are. There is a place where multiple times in the Bible where kodesh in the plural becomes ko dashim, like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, like holy ones, can we have a schwa and a reduced kamatz? No. Yeah. What happens to this one? It turns into a full vowel. Good. Which one? It's probably going to vowel harmonize with this one. It's okay, actually go. going to become a kamatz katan. Uh-huh. Kodashim. Kodashim. Yeah. Yeah. Kodashim. Kodashim. yeah. Let's look for. Can you think of a word that starts with mm, a guttural? Maybe a chet or an ayin. Um, Arafel. Avar. Arafel. I want, it to be a reduced, I want it to be a reduced vowel reduced. on that guttural. Havarin. Um, oh, okay. That's a good one. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. So, what be, what was chaver is going <laughs> to turn into chaverim or chava chaver chaverim chaver. Uh oh, is it chaverim or chaverim? Well, let's just for the sake of argument, let's assume that it's a reduced patach. We add. Um, we're going to give something to friends. We can't have two reduced two reduced vowels. So what does this become? Vowel harmonization. It becomes. Well, that's a patach over there. So this will become a patach. Vowel harmonization is where you take a reduced vowel and then make a short vowel in front of it. 
So lacha instead of Very le good. or li, it becomes lacha. 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 Um, there was another. There was another. Yes, you did. There was another verb from earlier. Hee. Where is it? Hee. It was a he feel, and it had to do with causing to go up. Ah, that was the helitu uh, tunu, right? This one. There's another example of uh, vowel harmonization. We can't put a schwa under the ayin, so it takes an ie vowel, reduced vowel instead, which then causes this to vowel harmonize. So you have like vowels together. Segol goes with reduced segol. Mm -hmm. Patach goes with reduced patach. Kamatz katan goes with reduced kamatz. And now get this. Get this. Chirik goes with shvaz. So apparently, apparently, Shva was originally a reduced I vowel. And that tells us that the Israelites spoke at the front of their mouths. You know how most people have a certain location in their mouth, like Americans speak in their nose and Germans speak in the back of their mouth. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the, I don't want to. I don't want to go too far with it, but everybody seems to have a preferred location of where they speak in the mouth. Apparently, Israelites spoke at the front of the mouth because they naturally tended towards these two vowels if something gets reduced. The only time it diverges from that is when you get gutturals involved, then it takes one of these other ones. Unsurprisingly, Israel, uh, Israelis today, by and large, speak at the front of the mouth. That's why they say eh instead of uh, you know, instead of um or uh, while you're thinking of what word to say, they say eh, because the front of the mouth is where they're speaking from primarily. So if you want to sound more Israeli, say eh. <laughs> All right. I think that we have to draw this to a conclusion. Thank you all so very much for coming. Thank you, and I really Thank appreciate you. those of you who support Hungry for uh, Hungry. Thank you all so very much. Look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Shalom. 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 Thank you. Shalom. 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 Shalom.